audience, I would like to present the progress in my PhD topic, which is the investigation of the link between different diseases from the aspect of the oral microbiome. My name is Ruzanna Domokos. My vision is to develop an interdisciplinary knowledge by investigating the association between dental and systematic diseases and also improve the treatment which improves both dentists and medical doctors. My mission is to incorporate multidisciplinary attitude into clinical practice based on a comprehensive knowledge. Here are my specific goals in order to fulfill my vision and mission. Uh, my goal is to try to identify a possible risk population in dentistry through a meta-analysis and also in the future through a clinical uh, study. And also I would like to improve the treatment and the follow-up method, method of periodontal patients uh, through also a meta-analysis. The title of our first project is Patients with Inflammatory Bowel Diseases Have a Higher Chance of Developing Periodontitis. Firstly, we are pr very proud to announce uh, that our manuscript was uh, accepted and published in November to Frontiers in Medicine, which is a Q1 journal to a special uh, research topic in gastroenterology section. About the background of this topic, uh, it is known that periodontitis is the most common oral condition in the world. According to different epidemiological studies, uh, periodontitis can affect from 20 to 50% of the adult population. However, severe periodontal disease can affect 10% of the adult, adult population, which is the major cause for tooth loss. Moreover, periodontitis is not only an oral condition, but it can cause uh, some uh, systematic diseases like coronary heart disease, or it can contribute in preterm birth, or even stroke, which can cause the death of the patients. It is known that there are several risk factors uh, to con that contribute in developing periodontitis. Some of the most known are poor oral hygiene and smoking, but there are also some systematic diseases like diabetes mellitus and hematologic disorders. And our question is that if maybe inflammatory bowel, dis bowel diseases can also be associated with periodontitis. As both diseases are multifactorial, investigating the interdisciplinary, the possible association between them uh, could, Im could widen our knowledge and also improve uh, the treatment of these diseases, which should be an interdisciplinary uh, work. The aim of this study was to investigate the association between periodontitis and IBD from both directions and identify possible risk population in dentistry. Uh, the clinical question was the following, is there an association between periodontitis and IBD? And to thoroughly answer the questions, we investigated it from both directions. Here you can see uh, that we applied two uh, PECOs to investigate also if uh, patients with IBD have a higher chance to develop periodontitis, and also uh, equally in the other way around, if patients with per uh, periodontitis have a higher chance to develop IBD. The clinical implication was to identify possible risk population. Here's the systematic search with the following search key, search key, which was applied in October last year. Here's the flowchart of selection. After the selection process, process we ended up with 14 eligible articles. Uh, as a primary outcome, we compared the prevalence of IBD and periodontitis, so we, co uh, we calculated the odds ratio values. On this slide, uh, you can see that the odds ratio value is 2.65, uh, which means that the, in the case of the healthy population, the odds for developing uh, uh, periodontitis is 1. Then in the case of IBD population, the odds is 2.65, uh, which means, uh, to trans translate it to clinics, that IBD patients have a higher chance to develop periodontitis. The heterogeneity was 0%, which means that the studies were very homogeneous. Uh, we investigated separately if the two forms of IBD, the Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis patients, separately uh, have this association too. On the slide, you can see that we investigated separately that Crohn's disease patients have also have a higher chance to develop periodontitis. The odds ratio is 2.22. And in the case of uh, ulcerative colitis patients, the odds ratio was 3.52, which means that in all three cases, the association seems true. Uh, as I have mentioned, we investigated the association also from the other direction, uh, but to answer this question, we found only two eligible articles, uh, so a reliable statistical evaluation is not yet possible, but there are tendencies that could be examined, and both studies got to the conclusion uh, that, ulcerative, uh, that patients with uh, periodontitis have a higher chance to develop ulcerative colitis in the future, but this association is not true in the case of Crohn's disease patients. 
the main strengths of our study is that we investigated a clinically really, really relevant topic. Uh, according to our risk of bias assessment, we used high quality studies. Uh, and to our best knowledge, this is the first study to investigate the association between IBD and periodontitis also from both direction. And we followed a very rigorous methodology through the whole process. Uh, to the limitation, as I have mentioned, we had only two eligible studies to answer a uh, second PECO, uh, so more studies are needed uh, for a reliable statistical evaluation. And we also investigated some secondary outcomes, which were, which were different clinical periodontal measurement uh, techniques, like PPD, CAL measurement, uh, but uh, these measurements were not done in a standardized way, way in the studies, uh, so the statistical evaluation was not possible. The biggest conclusion of our study is that IBD patients have a higher chance of developing periodontitis than IBD-free patients. Uh, getting an IBD diagnosis is a lifelong diagnosis. However, most patients are not aware of the associated risk factors. And we should uh, emphasize that a multidisciplinary attitude should be brought into the treatment of IBD patients because, however, IBD, managing IBD is still a primarily a gastroenterological issue. Also, there are some associated diseases, so other uh, disciplines should be brought into the treatment. So also dentists uh, and gastroenterologists also should be aware of this association and they should emphasize the importance of the regular dental checkups and prevention in their case even more than in the healthy population. As an implication for research, uh, it is known that both diseases are multifactorial and uh, the reason for uh, their development is not fully understood. Uh, so investigating the association then, uh, we can find some common immunological or genetical pathways which can also improve the treatment of these diseases in the future. Here's the status of my manuscript again, which was accepted uh, to Frontiers in Medicine. Also, uh, this topic was brought to Semmel by Symposium as a poster abstract. The title of our second project is the association between matrix metalloproteinase 8 and clinical uh, parameters in periodontitis, which is also a systematic review and meta-analysis. Periodontal diseases are destructive processes involving the periodontium, which is the supportive apparatus around the tooth. On the following slides and pictures, uh, here you can see a case uh, of a patient with healthy periodontium. Compared to this, on this slide, you can see a patient with gingivitis. The bigger, biggest difference between the two pictures is that uh, when doing probing in the clinics, we get uh, bleeding. However, there is no attachment loss. Compared to this, in the case of periodontitis, there is both radiological and clinical attachment loss. If we investigate histologically uh, the healthy gingiva, uh, we see no inflammatory cell infiltrates, there are only a few PMN cells. Uh, but only after four days of not brushing your teeth or some traumatic effects, there are different changes in the histology uh, of the gingiva. However, uh, the clinical signs of the disease can appear only in a later phase. But there is an enzyme, the matrix metalloproteinase 8 enzyme, which, can, uh, which elevates uh, even after only four days. The matrix metalloproteinase 8 is a collagenolytic enzyme which causes periodontal degeneration. And in active periodontal diseases, the pathological elevation and activation of MMP8 uh, in periodontal uh, tissues can be measured. Uh, it uh, can be seen in different oral fluids. The most important one is the gingival trabecular fluid, but it can easily be measured from the saliva, which would be a great opportunity to use in everyday practice to measure it from uh, the saliva. The aim of this study is to compare how the level of MMP changes in periodontally healthy patients and in patients with periodontitis. We will also compare the reliability of MMP level measurement with conventional clinical and radiological diagnosis. Uh, here are the clinical questions, which are the questions of our study. Uh, the most important is that how much higher are MMP level, levels in periodontitis and in gingivitis cases compared to healthy patients? To answer the question, uh, on the right side you can see the PECO, which we will get the answer, and on the left side you can see a PFO framework, which will help us uh, to compare the, the conventional clinical periodontal measurements uh, with the MMP8 level measurements. And our hypothesis is that MMP8 level measurement can be an efficient tool in clinical practice, which can improve or even substitute conventional periodontal clinical measurement techniques. The clinical implication of our study is to introduce a novel, simple, and convenient periodontal measurement me method into clinical practice. 
On this slide, you can see the search key, and the systematic search was carried out in this year, October. Here, you can see the flowchart of selection. After the duplicating, well, we had 3,000 articles, and the, in the end, we ended up with uh, 37 uh, articles. Uh, here's the progress I have made. Right now, we are doing the data extraction. And I would like to thank you for your attention with this quote, every mountain top is within reach if you just keep climbing. Thank you. Congratulations, Jana, on your accepted paper. Uh, I just wanted to know about the second topic. How do you plan to categorize these MMP8 levels uh, to correlate with your outcomes? Is there, there are some guidelines on this? How do you plan to correlate them according to the levels? Thank you. Uh, yes, thank you for your questions. Uh, there are different uh, methods in different studies which they use to compare uh, these outcomes uh, with the MMP8 level of measurement. Uh, we will follow uh, the guides that uh, all these other researchers use so we can compare them in a, met in a meta analysis uh, through a statistical evaluation. Thank you for your presentation. My question is that um, are there any uh, methods to prevent the MMP8 level increase? Uh, thank you for your question. It is very important to note uh, that uh, MMP8 uh, level is, a, is an endogenous enzyme. So the elevation uh, of it uh, appears when there is a, an effect, like not brushing your tooth or traumatic effect. Uh, there are some studies, uh, like genetical studies, so uh, changing the mRNA and not try to reduce the level of MMP8 uh, level, uh, but there were not uh, very good results with it. So the prevention is the most important uh, part uh, in preventing the MMP8 level measurement and also the periodontal disease, which is the most problem in this case. But there are also endogenous enzymes uh, which uh, prevent uh, the elevation, uh, like tissue inhibitor enzymes. Uh, there were also studies if maybe if we increase these uh, levels, but these are not yet uh, accepted uh, methods. Your presentation and of course congratulations on your accepted first paper. Uh, my question is uh, regarding your first topic, the correlation between IBD and periodontal disease. What are we exactly investigating? Do we investigate the, uh, po the probability of periodontitis um, yeah, occurring any point in the life, in any lifetime, or is it um, five years after we know they have IBD, the occurrence of periodontitis, or ten years for which is the follow-up time we are looking at? Uh, most studies which we uh, could use uh, were not uh, follow-up uh, studies, uh, so they just uh, investigated IBD diagnosis and periodontal diagnosis. Uh, but uh, the it would be much better if we can use uh, follow-up studies where we are investigating the same cohort uh, for 15 years or something like that. That would be a better uh, approach in this question. Congratulations. A very quick question which will reveal my total ignorance in this field. Uh, why is it important to measure MMP8 in case of diseases which uh, can be easily detected? Because uh, gingivitis and uh, periodontitis can be easily detected by a dentist. So what, what, is the, uh, uh, what is the goal of measuring something which, it, if a disease can be detected more simply? Thank you for the question. Uh, it, it is more important in the case of periodontitis because nowadays the gold standard uh, is that we do an x-ray, also a special a periodontal x-ray, and we measure uh, the sulcus, the probing pocket depths, in case of every teeth, these in six parts. This, is, this can be a bit painful for the patient. It is also tiring for the patients and uh, quite long. And then we have to evaluate uh, these uh, PPD measurements. The gen we also measure the gingiva recession. We see the bleeding on probing. Uh, so this takes a lot of time. And it is much easier and much more convenient for the patient as if we don't have to uh, push the probe into the sulcus in every, play, uh, every T6 uh, parts, then just give some oral, uh, saliva sample, five minutes, and then we can see the results. Mm -hmm.